This is going to be interesting. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to look about at today is uh, a borescope or a videoscope or a video borescope, depending on your nomenclature. Uh, this one happens to come from Olympus. It is the Iplex Ultralight. Ultralight. And I'm trying to get all organized here. I got the snake I got to deal with. Um, if you've seen borescopes before, mm -hmm. your typical borescope has what is called a pistol grip, and it sounds like exactly what it looks like. It's like you're holding a gun. Uh, Olympus has gone with a slightly different mm -hmm. um, shape here. Olympus calls this the brandy snifter I like that. Uh, yeah, grip, yeah. because if you'll see here, I'm holding it just like you might hold a brandy snifter. <clears throat> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of row, <laughs> I think I'll knock off after this and go have a brandy. Um, this actually, this grip is very interesting. I, I got to uh, tell you, this uh, this unit only weighs 700 grams. We're only talking about uh, a pound and a half. This grip allows me to, at my fingertip, have a camera trigger. Uh, at my thumb, I've got the articulator. You can probably see it here um, as I move my thumb. Oops, there we go. Move my thumb. It's articulating the tip. Uh, also, at my thumb, I've got uh, brightness control, zoom control, and actually, there's another uh, there's another joystick down here that allows me to control some software functions if I'm going to use them. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a couple of really simple inspection tasks. And in order to um, in order to allow you to see what the camera is seeing, I'm actually not going to hold this in my hand. I'm actually going to just put it down on the desk here, and uh, we'll switch to a a camera view. And what we're going to do now, if we just switch to the camera view here, I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to inspect the impellers of an in irrigation pump. I'm going to snake this, uh, I'm going to snake my, uh, there we go, I'm going to snake my insertion tube right down mm -hmm. into here. First of all, let me tell you, uh, I am using a 120 degree uh, direct view near focus lens. Uh, there are several other lenses available that go with the iPlex Ultralight, including a 40 degree, 80 degree, and as I said, 120 degree direct view. There is also a 80 degree and 120 degree right angle um, lens, and uh, both of these both are available in both near view and far view. By the way, near view in this case allows me to focus from four millimeters, that's practically touching the object, to 190 millimeters and stay, in, that is, is a really large depth of focus. Okay, so I'm inside, I'm looking at my impeller blades here. You should be able to see that, perfect, okay. Uh, I can look, go around, I can look at the leading edges of my impeller blades in my irrigation pump. I can see they actually look, whoops, let's get over to here. There we go. Where'd it go? Here we go. We can see the leading edge looks clean. No chips taken out of it. That's a common problem with irrigation pumps. Uh, you're sucking in gravel, and your impellers can get pretty munged up after a while. These look really good. So now very easily, I've actually to, been able to go into and look at um, very nicely lit, very crisp view of my impeller blades. Now imagine this could actually be going inside um, a jet engine or inside a helicopter engine to do non-contact, non-destructive, non-take-apart mm -hmm. <laughs> inspection. Exactly now right. I'm going to do another inspection function here, and this time I'm going to document what I'm doing. I'm going to look at what I've got here now. This is just your plain old uh, spigot, mm -hmm. yard spigot. I'm going to look at the valve, both the valve and the valve seat. So again, using my 120 degree view lens. I'm going to snake that down. And now you can see I'm right, there we go. We're actually looking now, you can see I'm actually looking at the valve. The valve itself. We can see the rubber. We can see the rubber looks nice. There's no cracks. It's not worn. It's not indented. Actually, while I'm in here, I can look at the housing of the, the valve and I can see there's no cracks in the brass and everything. Looks pretty clean. I want to take a picture of this for documentation purposes. So, I come over and I press my trigger, which is at an awkward position now since I'm not really holding the device in my hand. But there we go. I press the button and I take a picture of the unit. Now I can pull this back out. Now what I want to do is look at the valve seat. But what I'm going to do is replace the lens. So if we come over here to our uh, gauge cam here. Um, there we go. I can show you what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to remove my direct view lens, and I'm going to replace it with a right angle lens. So a couple things about these lenses. As I mentioned, there's several different lenses, I think uh, seven or eight different lenses. The lens itself has got an integral LED. Every lens has got its own LED built in. So you're not piping light down the insertion tube. The light is actually at 
the point where you're doing the work because it's in the lens itself. Each lens is made up of three elements, three lenses go into an objective, so three pieces of glass. Olympics, Olympus is known for its, uh, the quality of its optics, and that is one of the things that you're seeing here. These are very nice lenses, give you a very crisp view. That, uh, that in conjunction with the, um, uh, uh, the video processing built into the unit itself gives you very nice images. Now, one last thing I want to point out, this is a safety issue. Um, these objectives go on over two sets of threads. And the purpose, for the, uh, the purpose for the threads, two sets of threads, is that if you only had one set of threads and your objective was to come loose, you might lose your objective mm -hmm. inside your million dollar helicopter engine, right. which means you'd have to take that sucker apart, right? You wouldn't want to do that. Right. So by having two sets of threads, when you put the objective on, it goes over one set of threads. That kind of loosely attaches it, but it's secure. The second set of threads actually put into place, engage the LED, and mm -hmm. so forth. If it was to come loose while you were doing an inspection and disengage itself from the first set of threads, you would actually get an indication on the screen telling you that you've come disconnected, right. which allows you time to pull it back out and the second set of threads keep it in place. Right. Okay, so let's do a quick, let's do a quick inspection of a valve seat. So I'm going to put this back in here. I've got my right angle, 120 degree lens. I snake this in there. Now we're looking at the valve seat. Now that I've got the valve seat, I actually want to record the valve seat. And what I'm going to do is find the, find the trigger because, unfortunately, here, hold on one second. In order to get to the trigger easily, I'm going to have to lift this thing up. It's really meant to be operated with my hand here. So I'm going to press and hold for three seconds. I'll come back and show you what the screen looks like. When I press and hold for three seconds, it asks me if I want to record a movie. I say yes, and now what I'm doing is I'm actually recording a video of this valve seat. So as I move, maneuver around and look all around the valve seat, I can record it. When I'm done recording, I would simply, and I'll come back to our camera here, I will turn recording off, and now come back to our gauge cam here. Daniel, sorry I'm doing all that switching on you. Now if I hit the view button, now we're actually playing the movie that I just recorded. I can toggle now to other images that I've taken. There's the still image that I took earlier. If I press and hold my view button, I get a thumbnail view, which allows me to kind of go through and select all the images that I've taken before and play them back. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a very cool instrument. Uh, some other things about it, it can be either battery or AC operated. The battery lasts about 90 minutes. There's a four gigabyte, um, uh, SD card to store your images. Obviously, obviously, once you've stored your images, you can connect it to a computer, yep. download it, download your images, download your movies, and so forth. Uh, IP55 rated, so dust and moisture resistant, shock resistant, Gorilla Glass on the, um, on the front of this. Um, as I mentioned, weighs only 700 grams, only a pound and a half. Very comfortable to hold, very easy to use. Uh, the thumb actuator actually works really well. So, bottom line. 17 grand mm -hmm. for the basic unit. That's, uh, that's what you see here. That's what you see here. Basic unit, uh, single lens, battery pack, uh, AC adapter, carrying case, so forth. Uh, if you were to get one of these with all the lenses, mm -hmm. a rigid insertion tube mm -hmm. instead of a two meter flexible tube, mm -hmm. uh, you'd be running probably 30, 35 mm -hmm. grand, something mm -hmm. like that for a fully blown Lexus. Yeah. Um, so, but this is, uh, bore scopes are actually invaluable tools mm -hmm. if you're having to do internal inspection of complex parts. Yeah, I mean, any, it's, anything uh, we just saw here, t here today and everything yeah. you And typically well? these, these are used in the petrochemical industry, yep. oil industry, uh, um, process, uh, process in in industries, and aeronautics. I, I mentioned helicopter yep. engine. I was sure. reading a blog. Somebody uses one of these to do internal inspection of helicopter engines. So, very, very where you don't want to have to take something apart. So. Very, very flexible tool. Yeah. So again, that was the Olympus iPlex Ultralight. Ultralight. That's it. From Olympus. Yeah. It's great. Thank you, Derek. Yeah, Another sure. great, great tech learner.